My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review for Lost, the entire TV show. And this will be a spoiler filled review, so if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Then come back and watch my review because I will be going in depth. Now this is going to be a very long review. And of course I'm filming this the week that my camera keeps malfunctioning, so I'm actually kind of anxious if the camera is going to break down the bunch here. So let's just get into it. Lost is a TV show that lots of people loved. For the longest time, I hold it was one of the greatest shows ever made. And after watching it, is that statement true? Absolutely not. No. No. Now, it does have some good things about it. I do think it's entertaining. And I don't regret watching it, but it is far from great. It is a heavily flawed TV show. It does take a while to get going. But then it does eventually find its footing in season 2 and that carries over into season 3 and then the rest of the season of the show is just a complete mess but you don't mind as much because at least by that point you're connected to the characters. So let's begin talking about each and every character. Beginning with Jack. Jack is played by Matthew Fox, who I think gives a really good performance. He hasn't been in a lot of movies or shows outside of this one, and I think it's a shame because he is talented. Now, in the first season, I didn't really care for him. I thought he was bland, not charismatic at all, but he did come to his own for me in season 2, and I only started to like him more and more from that point forward. I love how he doesn't seek the position of leader. It comes to him naturally based on who he is as a person. Kind of like Ripley in Alien. He's smart, tough, and always trying to come up with a plan. He's always willing and trying to help others, and he's just a selfless hero. I love the idea behind that he starts off hating Locke, but by the end of the show, he becomes just like him. Going from a man of science to a man of faith, I love that idea, but the execution of it is very messy. It's so messy because it's entirely reliant on this one episode where he gets engaged to Kate, and then they get in one fight and call everything off, and all of his future behavior from this point forward is based in this one episode. And this foundation is just so incredibly forced to the point where there was a total disconnect. They seem to want to disguise his depression with this whole Alan is calling him back stunt, but it never works. If the show nailed the moment where everything fell apart for him with him and Kate, and was more honest with the character, I would have liked him and the plot regarding him in the latter seasons. You know, if they just approached it like he lost any bit of purpose in life and that he wants to go back to the island because he felt like he was making a difference there. I would have liked it if they approached that, this character that way for the latter seasons. I do also like the idea of them trying to humble him in season 6 from him being a leader to him taking orders and realizing that he's made mistakes. I like that route. And... I won't talk too much about the flashbacks here until later on, but I will say that he has some of the strongest flashback episodes regarding him and his wife. So, I do think Jack overall is a strong character, Matthew Fox plays him well, just the directions they took him in later seasons just didn't work for me. Then we've got Kate, played by Evangeline Lilly, and there's gonna be another video where I talk about my favorite characters, and while I was making that video, I realized that I don't have a lot to say about Kate. There's not a lot of character work going on with her. I just think she's a very likable presence. Evangeline Lilly is great in the role, and she brings the proper amount of charm, cuteness, and just overall likability that was needed for this character to have. I do like how in the first season you're unsure if you can trust her at all, but then they relied on the flashbacks to give the audience the information that they can trust her instead of having her prove it. So that didn't really work for me, and whole goal in the latter seasons of wanting to find Claire, I just didn't care for. So I do like this. I do like this character a lot, though. I don't have a lot to say, like I said, but I think she's cute, likable, a complete badass when needed, and just a great presence to have on this show. And then we've got Sorrel, who's played so incredibly well by Josh Holloway, and this is my favorite character. He's got a unique but likable personality that just allows him to stand out. 
He's an asshole who does prove that he has a good heart in moment. Almost all of the best lines in this show come from him. He's funny, tough, and a badass when needed. And I do like the arc of him becoming a leader in season 5. I don't really care for his flashback so I don't really need that entire con man saying I didn't need that, but still a really strong character. And then we've got Juliet. I guess Romeo wasn't in this show, but uh, Juliet's played by Mrs. Claus herself. And this is one of the least interesting characters. Like, I liked her a lot in season 3 because there was this whole element of can we trust her or not. But after that, she just adds nothing to the show. There's no real personality. She's just overly nice. She doesn't argue. She's just kind of there. I do feel bad that Kate seems to steal all the guys away from her. And her surviving that far at the end of season 5 is just ridiculous. So, yeah, not a very memorable character. Then we've got the Heat, played by Naveen Andrews, and I liked him in season 1, but after that, he just has nothing left to do. He got old really fast, and he's just a one-note character that never progresses. Like, what's his character arc in the show? Over 6 seasons, I feel like he never changes. Then we've got John Locke, played by Terry O'Krin, who I think does a good job in this role. I didn't like him at all in the first season, I just thought that... He was taking everything so seriously and just nothing about the character worked for me in season 1. But I did like the whole idea of him being in a wheelchair and then miraculously can walk again. And how he's grateful to the island for that. I like that, but in season 1 he was just walking around stating his world view without it coming into play at all. Now the second season actually uses his world view to create conflict. So that's when he was most interesting to me. The third, fourth, and fifth season just had him doing whatever. Switching sides, wandering around, just... It feels like they didn't know where to take this character. And he always is just like, oh, I'm doing this because I'm meant to or some bullshit like that. And you just don't buy it. Now, they clearly wanted him to be the villain in season 6, but they killed him off in season 5, so they couldn't do that. So they're just like, uh, what if we just give someone else the appearance of Locke so we can get that Jack and Locke fight we've been building up the entire show and I just wish it was actually Jack versus Locke. I think killing him off was a big mistake and him dying was robbed of any potential impact it could have because the show misleads us into thinking he's still alive so we never mourn him. And then it's just like, surprise, he's actually dead. So it's just like... You could have gotten some emotion there, but they didn't. He's a character that had lots of potential that falls flat in latter seasons, and I think it's a shame. Then we've got Holy, played by George Garcia. I definitely mispronounced his first name. Is it pronounced George? George? I'm not entirely sure. But now this is probably a hot take, but I didn't really like this character at all. I didn't mind him at first, but he eventually got on my nerves. Like, they clearly think that he's the heart and soul of the show, that he represents humanity in its purest form, but no, just no. I found him to be aggravating throughout, he was annoying, and he's shown to be selfish quite a few times, especially when it comes to that whole food dynamic in the second season where he's just like, I don't want to be in charge of the food, so I'm just going to steal it and eat it myself. Like, what a dick. Uh... He just adds nothing to the show. I didn't find him to be funny or interesting. Just meh. I didn't like the mental hospital plot. Him speaking to the dead in the last season was stupid. And the numbers plot is the absolute worst. Which well, which I will touch on briefly later. But yeah. Then we've got Sun played by Lung Jun Kim. Who I think does a fine job. And she's a fine background character. She's not all that interesting or compelling. But she's never annoying. I liked her more in the last two seasons as there was more emotion behind her character to find Jin. But also her losing her English in the last season was a very odd decision. Uh, then we've got Jin played by Daniel Day Kim and I think he does a good job and he's a completely unlikable jackass for the first four seasons. I thought every time that we see a flashback it just gets revealed that he's a big old big old dick. Like he's just... Completely unlikable. That said though, he also has some of the sweetest moments in the first four seasons. So he goes from this 
unlikable ass or two. Ah, oh, that's sweet. To this unlikable ass or two. This ah, oh, that's sweet. Uh, he does become more likable in the last two seasons. He just seemed to stop being an unlikable asshole. And those moments where he reunites with Sun in the last season, I thought was really sweet. And the fact that he was willing to die than to live a life without Sun, I thought was a very emotional moment. So, first four seasons, hate him despite some strong moments. But the last two seasons, I did start to care for him a bit more. Then we've got Charlie, who I'm sure I have another hot take with, but um, I didn't like this character at all. Now Dominic Minogan plays him just fine, but I just found this character to be bland and uninteresting. I didn't like his backstory. I like that they tried to make him a villain in season 2, but then they immediately backtrack. Like, to make it clear, he put a bag over Sun's head and attacked him. But they just, they were just like, I don't know if we can make this guy the villain, and I just wish they did. Um, the His death in the build-up to it was surprisingly emotional, but at the end of the day, I just never really cared for him. I didn't care for his relationship with Claire and Aaron. He was just a nothing character. Then we've got Claire, played by Amelia D. Raven. And this might be the most nothing character there is. She adds absolutely nothing to this show. She just has no personality. She's not funny. She's not strong. She's just a cute blonde and that's all she's got going for her. Her pregnancy storyline never really worked for me. I never connected with her and Aaron as they didn't really focus on them all that much. And I think there's lots of potential there. The story of this mom who was going to give up her baby and then due to unforeseen circumstances ends up being forced to raise him and she starts to really care for him, that's a great story and a great character arc, but they don't lean into that as much as they should. And then she just kind of walks away from the show midway through season four, and you're just like, what, where is she going? And then they kind of turn her into the French lady for season six, where she still has nothing to do, but she looks a bit more crazy or while she has nothing to do. And the entire subplot of her being related to Jack just goes nowhere. There's no strong emotional moment between the two of them. It's just this thing that gets brought up for some reason. And then that's it. Then we've got Shannon, played by Maggie Grace, who I know from the Taken movies. And she does a fine job with what she's given. But what she's given makes her so bloody annoying. When she died, I was just like, thank God. I, I didn't buy her relationship with Sahid for even a second. And then we got Boone, played by Ian Somado, and when we see him in season 6, I'm just like, huh, this character's actually really likable. But in the, first in the first season, he just was unlikable. He was this insecure, jealous jackass who wanted to bang his sister and just, uh, no. Then we've got Michael, played by Harold P. I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. And he is the one character that I will say I liked his backstory. I like the flashbacks to his character. The whole idea of he wanted to be a father, but the girl didn't want him to be, so then she kind of forced him to stay away, and now he's in a position where he can actually be a father. I like that story, and I do think it's one of the few flashback stories that tie in really well with the main plot on the island. He's decent in the fourth season as this overprotective father, but the second season, at least the first half, I couldn't stand him. Because all he was doing was panicking and screaming Watt's name over and over again. And I get it. It's realistic. He lost his son. But I still found him to be very annoying. But in the second half of season 2, while they turned him into a villain, I thought that was a very compelling route to take his character. And I actually wish they doubled down on that. But when he left the island, I just felt like that was the natural ending to his character, but then they brought him back for season 4, and I'm just like, why are they doing this? His story wrapped up, it ended. And they try to give him this redemptive arc of how he feels guilty over everything, and I just didn't buy it. They tried to humanize him, and it just didn't work. And the actual timeline doesn't work. Like, he left at the end of season 2, and he's on this boat that would have been outside the island at the end of season 3, which would just be like, I don't even think a month after he left. So it just doesn't work. It was probably the worst 
or at least one of the worst decisions made to bring him back because he doesn't even end up doing anything. And then we've got Watt, played by Malcolm David Kelly, and he's fine. He was nice to have on the island for the first season because he was a different kind of character. He was a kid, so that just allowed him to stand out. And I do like the whole angle of him coming to trust his dad. But they wore him out before he could really add anything to the show. And I get it. The show's the first few seasons take over the span of a couple months. And he's a kid. You keep bringing him back year after year. He's going to look older and older. And, you know, maybe they could have made the beach into the beach from old. But I guess they didn't do that. Uh, that scene when he's in season 5 talking to Locke just felt very awkward and unneeded. And uh, then we've got Desmond played incredibly well by Henry Ian Cusick, who I don't think has done anything at all outside of the show, at least nothing that I know of. Uh, but he's a talented actor, and I like what he brings to this character. He's likable, charming, and his relationship with Penny is the purest relationship in the show. But his actual story beats that he's given to work with are the absolute worst. Him having visions and seeing the future and time traveling and being a human electromagnetic force just doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. I think them bringing him to the island for season 6 was a terrible decision because he already had his happy ending. And he's a character who should have been allowed to have that. So for them to bring him back just for whatever reason, I didn't think that was needed. Then we've got Ben, played very well by Michael Emerson, who brought a nice, unique quality to this character. I loved him in Season 2, as I had no idea if I could trust him. And in Season 3, I really liked him as a villain because he had a unique presence to him. But after that, they lost me. This entire, he's always in control angle, just felt so contrived and stupid. The fact that he let Alex die, his own daughter, really dehumanized him for me. And then they later try to make him feel guilt for it, but it was just too late. You're playing catch up now and you're already far behind. He could have easily prevented his death, but he chose not to. And that's just an unforgivable character trait to me. The whole angle of him wanting revenge and wants to kill Charles Whitmore's daughter as revenge uh, just ends up going nowhere. Like there's one scene where he tries to kill Penny for like two seconds. He fails and that's it. Like, they built it up like, oh, I'm going to kill your daughter, Charles. And it's just like, oh, Ben's seriously pissed off here. But that just ends up going nowhere. Uh, I do like the forgiveness and the redemption arc they gave him in Season 6. But getting to that point was pretty rough. The more I think about it, the more I think they should have just killed him off after Season 3. Speaking of Charles Whitmore, played by Alan Dale, this is a character who's nothing but wasted potential. They built him up to be this big villain, but he just ends up doing nothing. Like, even in season 6, when he is a villain, he's almost never present. He's just a completely unneeded character. Then we've got Daniel Faraday, played by Jeremy Davies, and I know this is a fan favorite, and this is one of my least favorite characters. I don't understand why people like him. I don't like the presentation of this character. I mean, Davies actually gives one of the worst performances in the entire show for me. The constant stuttering and stumbling just felt incredibly forced. He adds nothing to the show. I do like the story of him being killed by his mom and the build up to it is great in concept, but in execution, it was lacking. So I didn't really care for this character. Then we've got Charlotte, not Charlotte from Charlotte's Web, but just Charlotte, played by Rebecca Maddo. And she's just a bland nothing character who added nothing to the show. When she died, I couldn't have killed less. Then we've got Mouse, played by Ken Lee Ong. And in season 4, I found him to be so annoying. He was just so over the top and serious. But in seasons 5 and 6, I think Ken Lee Ong really came to his own with this character. And he made him very entertaining. I like what he added to him. Now that said, the entire plot of his dad being the scientist in the videos was just really stupid. I feel like they just are like, oh, well, they're both Chinese, why not? And just, no, it didn't work. And the whole he can speak to the dead aspect is just really annoying. Uh, then we've got Frank, played by Jeff Holy, who I have almost nothing to say about him, except I really like his presence as a character. He adds very little to the plot. 
but I liked him whenever he was on screen. Then we've got Richard, who's quite a dick, but he's played by Nestor Carbonell, who's the mayor of Gotham City. And I was very curious about this character throughout this show and who he was. But he was so left in the background that by the time they eventually choose to focus on him, it was too late. The only attempt at giving him anything to do or tell his backstory far too late into the show for me to kill. And also, considering that he is as old as he is, he should have been a wiser character. Like, when we start to get to know him in season 6, he just makes every stupid decision and you're just like, you've been here for decades upon decades upon decades. You'd think he would be wiser, but I guess not. Then we've got Jacob, played by Mark Pellegrino, who I didn't think was good at all. I didn't like this character at all. It seems like they built him up to be this supernatural presence, like a ghost or something, and they just completely backtracked. And what we get instead is a clear metaphor for God, which works in some very few moments, but mostly doesn't. The whole instructing the others plot is really stupid. Him watching people to see how they'll act is a good idea, but it's not played up enough. The whole someone must be the next Jacob angle doesn't work at all, and his backstory was just awful. And then we've got the man in black, the smoke monster, and this was clearly not planned out even remotely. Not at all. It was obviously made up on the spot. They clearly got close to the end of the show and they're just like, guys, what about this smoke monster? Uh, I don't know, maybe he's the devil? That's a good idea. I like it. Let's do that. And then that's what they did. They made him a clear metaphor for the devil, which works in moments, but more often than not, doesn't. It's just so, like, the smoke monster was always the least compelling part for me. Anytime it showed up, I just thought it was goofy and dumb, and they clearly didn't have the budget they thought they did. He just pops up whenever to maybe kill someone, and there's just no rules or consistency. The reveal in season 4 that Ben can summon the smoke monster felt like a Scooby-Doo reveal. And then it turns out the smoke monster can look human. And it's just, wait, what? Why wouldn't he always look human then? And then he was a human who got turned into a smoke monster. And... What? Like, the more that they elaborate on it, the dumber it got. It's like I said, they just clearly wanted Locke to be the villain in season 6, so the only way they could do it by this point was to come up with this contrived nonsense. But by doing that, you rid the smoke monster of any individual character, because everyone calls him Locke. Every time we see him, we see Locke. It's just like you're robbing this monster of any personality. It's just relying on the established Locke character. If you dedicated to the monster element and you had this... A uh, man in black looks scary and deformed, or they take advantage of the ship shifting angle. That'd be interesting, but they don't. And then we've got Anne Yusia, played by Michelle Rodriguez, and I'm not a fan of Michelle Rodriguez as an actress. I just think she tries too hard to be this tough woman, while Evangeline Lily, it comes a lot more natural to her. Uh, she's a decent character, but she got killed before she was given anything to really do. Her death was shocking, it was a highlight of season 2, but then it just makes the whole character feel irrelevant. They tease the romance between her and Jack, but that just goes nowhere, and then the backstory of how she knew Jack's dad once was just beyond stupid. So, yes. And then we got Libby, played by Cynthia Rutgers, who I didn't really care for. She's a nothing character who added nothing, I didn't buy her relationship with Holy. And yeah, just nothing about this character worked. Then we got Mr. Echo, played by Idori Ikinori Abujaba, who I, you know, I nailed it. I pronounced it 100% properly. I like what he brings to the show. I think he's a good actor, and I like the personality he has. But the character himself just ends up doing nothing. When he dies, it lacks any bit of impact. And I know the story behind that, and I understand why it played out the way it did, but it still lacked any bit of impact, and I didn't care for his flashback story at all. Anthony Cooper, who is Locke's dad, 
Uh, he is too comedically over the top to be taken seriously at all. Like, they try to make him look like this awful, disgusting, evil guy, but they just go way too overboard with it to the point where he felt like a cartoon character. They just milked every bit of drama between him and Locke, and it didn't feel natural. And when he shows up on the island, first of all, I caught it, but it was also stupid and made no sense. But they don't even take advantage of that. They just brought him to the island for him to get killed. Like, that was it. Like, where did you find this guy? Why is he on the island? And what was the point behind all that? And it's just, he, he dies. And then it turns out he was the one responsible for Sawyer's parents' death. Really? Like, that's just ridiculously stupid. That, no, I don't buy it. Uh, then we've got Wolves and Bernard, who I really like these two. I think that they're two characters who should have been in the show more. I thought the moment where they reunited was genuinely moving, and their relationship was really sweet. They do get left in the background, unfortunately, but they're probably the best people in the show. Not the best characters, but the best people. Then we've got Danelle, played by Mia Fallon. She's a French lady, and I never liked this character. I thought she was flat all around. When they build her up like she might be the villain, she was boring. When she's walking together with them, she was boring. Now, I got somewhat intrigued when her daughter comes into the picture, but that storyline was never emotionally satisfying, and by the end, she just ends up feeling unneeded. Alex, played by Tanya Waymendi, uh, she is a flat and boring character. Like I said, her reuniting with her mom should have been emotional, but it's not. And when she died, there was no emotional impact. So she just ends up adding nothing to the show. And then the guy she likes, Carl, I never cared about his relationship with Alex. Just a nothing character who adds nothing to the show. Then we've got Mikhail, played by Andrew DeVos, and I liked him. He's not in the show a bunch, but I think the eye patch is a very nice touch. And I just liked him as a villain. I wish they used him more. Then we've got Tom Friendly, played by MC Ganey, and I liked his presence, but he doesn't really do anything. Him somehow leaving the island midway to season 3 to go see Michael makes zero sense. So, yeah. Uh, then we got Ethan. Uh, the whole idea of a bad guy pretending to be one of them is actually a really great idea. You know, you've got this whole double agent angle to it, but they do nothing with it. He just ends up being a nothing character, and him reappearing in season 6 for like 2 seconds was just like, really? And then this show also does this thing, well, they bring in these new cast members whenever they want and pretend like they were there the whole time. And it's such a transparent method. If you see a brand new character that you haven't seen before and are talking to them like, they're, like they've been there the whole time, I guarantee you they are going to die very soon to create stakes. And you don't create stakes from killing characters that we don't care about. You create stakes from killing characters that we do care about. There's that professor dude in season one, there's season four where that village is under attack and three people die and you're just like, eh. It's just so lazy. And now I wanna to touch on just a couple relationships in the show, beginning with the friendship between Jack and Sawyer, because this is something I really wish they touched up more on. The two are complete opposites and the two have a personal conflict in Kate but they do have a mutual respect for each other, and I really like their relationship when it's at play. Like, there's a few moments where they get along, and it's very satisfying to watch. Sawyer tells Jack about him and Anne. There's a scene where they play poker together. There's a scene where Sawyer tells Jack that he ran into his dad once. And those are all very strong moments. You also got moments where they hate each other, like in the long con, and for all of season six. Their friendship could be very interesting, have it tested in moments, have them kill for each other but choose not to show it, but they don't nearly play it up as much as they should. And it's almost completely absent in the second half of the show and I think it's a shame because that could have been a big highlight. Then we've got the big love triangle and I do like the love triangle. I do like the fact that they brought in some personal drama and it's a highlight of the first few seasons. And they try to maintain it in latter seasons, even though it makes no sense by that point. 
Like at the eventual point, it's just like, okay, we've got to move past that. There's a few times where they try to make it a love rectangle with season two with Anne Lucia being added into the mix, but that doesn't get played up enough. And in season three, they do the exact same thing with Juliet and it actually does work. So it's just like, oh, you failed with Anne Lucia, let's do it with Juliet. And that actually was an element for the rest of the show. Now, Sawyer and Kate's relationship is existent for the first couple of seasons. Like, she almost always picked Sawyer in the first three seasons. And I do like the whole aspect of her picking the bad boy over Jack. Because, you know, it's just realistic and it does get you more invested. If she ended up with Jack early on, you wouldn't be as invested to see where it goes. And I do like the chemistry between Jack and Kate. I like how it's their acts of heroism that draws them together, but it's also what ends up separating them in the end. And I think they have some really cute moments together. Lots of those moments are highlights for me. You're rooting for them, and there's more complexity with them. It's just a shame they ruined their relationship in one episode in season 4 in such a sloppy, ineffective manner. And it really ticked me off how later on the show, Kate's just like, you know, what's happened can't be reversed. It can be fixed. And Jack's just like, yeah, 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 whatever. So I really hate the way they treated it in the second half of the show. And then this show also has plenty of flashbacks. Now, if you've listened to my other reviews for this show, you'd know that I don't like the flashbacks even remotely. Now, there are moments where they work and they tie into the main story really well, like I mentioned earlier with Michael and his story. But like in the episode Man of Science, Man of Faith, we've got an episode where Jack is just like, no, nothing can be done to fix this girl's back. And then he ends up being proven wrong. And that ties in directly into the main theme of that episode. Or the hunting party where we see how Jack's wife left him and how that devastated him. And how now Kate's the one breaking his heart. It ties into the main episodes. But those were the exceptions, not the rule. Now, I do like how they tried to switch things up with the flash forwards and how you could use the flash forwards to try to piece together what happened in season four. I like that. But more often than not, it does end up being a complete waste of time. It's just lazy to fill in the blanks with certain characters using flashbacks. It's just blatant, unneeded exposition. There's no characters who get more interesting through the flashbacks. Like, good writing has to showcase who these people are using the story. And, like, the flashbacks, they just take up so much time. Like, they take up about 50% of each and every episode. And they're usually awful, especially when they focus on side characters. And then we got the Flash sideways in season six. I called them the alternate universe stuff, but I guess the official name for them is the Flash sideways. And look, I like the ending of season six when it turns out they're in purgatory. That works for me but only in a vacuum if you disregard the rest of the season because everything else makes no sense this season. The whole forgotten memory thing makes no sense. Like, you die, but you forget everything about life, kinda. Not really. It's just such contrived nonsense. Like, Jack and Juliet were married. They had a kid who really annoyed me. Sawyer and Cops were cops and they were partners. Sawyer had a thing for Charlotte. Daniel Faraday is the son of Charles Brentmore, but he still looks and acts the exact same. Just nothing makes sense. Like, you should at least put in a little bit of effort. You've got someone like Sahid, who liked Shannon for a week. And he later on the show gets married for six months before she dies. And in this afterlife, he chooses to be with Shannon instead. Really? All those changes and Kate's still a fugitive? There's just no consistency or logic to it. It's just an alternate universe version of these characters. And because I have no investment in them, because they're not the same characters. I think they should have approached this where the bomb at the end of season 5 works, but it only works for an alternate timeline. This Jack just saved another Jack some problems, but this Jack is still left to deal with the mess he's made. I would have liked that. If they just focus on what their life would have been without the plane crash, while the Jack we know is still left living the same life that he's been living. 
You know, what would it be like if he never made, met Kate? But they didn't go that route. It also takes me off that the bomb falls down a well, doesn't go off, but then Juliet saws a walk at it, and that does it. Really? But it also brings in a bigger question of why did the flash sideways happen in season 6 after that? Well, is the cause and effect? If they're in purgatory, and they're all dead in this alternate timeline, then nothing Juliet or Jack did in season 5 had any effect. They just make it look that way. Uh, we've talked about all the characters, let's talk about all the plot lines, beginning with the building of the raft in Season 1. And it makes sense why they would do that, but it's just not a compelling plot line. Like, I was just like, okay, well there's six seasons to this show, so of course it's not going to work. And there's just not enough material for the entire season, so at one point, Watt destroys it. And then the way this plot line eventually goes, where it gets blown up by these people because of reasons, it just didn't work for me. Then we've got the other storyline, and no, I'm not talking about the one with Nicole Kidman, but in season one, this storyline is just left far in the background. The only time I think it comes up is with Ethan and Claire's pregnancy, which I'll touch on that, on that in just a bit. And then they kidnap Watt at the end of the season. Why? We never get an answer. They say Watt's special, but we never actually get an explanation to that. Season 2 builds them up very well. Season 3, I think, pays them off well. And that should have been the end of their story, but I guess not. Like, the role that they play in the second half of the show is just incredibly stupid and adds nothing. And they're just way too organized. Like, in one moment, Ben lifts up a meal. And I guess they've been waiting for Ben to lift a meal forever. Uh, they should have died at the end of Season 3. And because, you know, at that point, their purpose was solved. But because you keep it going, you're just left wondering... What was their purpose? It would have been much more interesting if there were just people on the island who wanted to live. And they were just like, can we trust the people who, who crashed here? So that way, the reason why they are at odds with each other isn't drawn from heroes and villains. It's just from like two people unsure if they can really trust each other. It would have been more complex that way. And also, we find out that they've been on the island all this time. It's just like, why? So, eh, it didn't really work for me. Uh, then we've got the entire drug plane storyline, and I thought it was actually going to come into play a bit more. Like, I thought some people would come to the island looking for their lost drug plane, for their lost supply. But the only purpose of it is just that it ties into Mr. Echo's past. And if it didn't, it would have solved no purpose. Boons could have been killed by anything. Charlie could have lied earlier and kept his stash a secret. This matters because it matters how a show spends its time. And this entire storyline was completely unneeded. Then we've got the pregnancy storyline with Claire. And they say that pregnant people die on the island and it's not at all explained. But not just that, we never even see it happen. They say that people who are pregnant die, but we never feel it. Like, we don't see Claire or Sun start to suffer at all. And the whole idea behind it is just ridiculously stupid and adds nothing. Like, the others kidnap Claire. It's unclear what they did. They give us some medicine. And then it's just a plot that they spend so much time on. Try to have these twists and tones. And it just ends up being completely forgotten. It was just an unnecessary waste of time. We've got the whole pharma initiative, and in season one, where it begins with this mystery of the hatch, I just never cared for it. Like, they took it far too seriously, and Locke's just like, oh, the people wouldn't understand. They, they couldn't comprehend a hatch on this island. It was just far too serious. Uh, the reveal that Desmond's living there was... Eh, it wasn't the most satisfying, but it does lead us to the ticking clock, which was used very well in Season 2 to ramp up the tension and to challenge philosophies on life. But the bu button pressing really went nowhere, no matter what the show tries to tell you. Like, there's no real aftermath. I think at one point, they're like, what if the button crashed the plane? But it didn't. So it's just like, so they try to make it look like they had to keep pressing the button. And then, you know, we get one, oh! moment that only affected the people in the hatch but everyone outside of it was just fine so it really did amount to nothing uh the intrigue in season two was the best when they were discovering all those hatches even though they did go a little overboard but just the reveal that it's just a company named pharma 
which Big Pharma is always a bad company. But just the fact that this company was on the island just doing things just isn't remotely satisfying. Like the more we found out about it, the less intrigued I was. And them being a part of Pharma in the past wasn't planned out at all. And I guess we should talk about the time traveling because it was only set up in the way that Desmond's episodes went about. But it was still not set up to at all. It was clearly not planned out to and it just comes out of nowhere and it just shows you how much of this show was made up on the spot. The whole Ben toned evil because of Kate and Soyle's mistake thing was laughably bad. So yeah, I didn't like the time traveling at all. If you watch a show like Doc, which is so well thought out and complex and intriguing and then you get this show where it's just Clearly not planned up. It just shows you how little effort they put into the show in moments. Uh, the whole plot in season 4 of Charles Whitmore crew coming to rescue them, or maybe not, was just so obvious. Like, it was just so obvious from the start they want there to help them. And then when they're like, are you here to help us? No, it's meant to be this dun 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 shocking moment. And it's just like, duh. Like, of course they're not. It was just dragged out, lacked any urgency, and the characters are bland. Then we've got the kind of plot line with Mrs. Faraday. And like I said, the idea of her killing her son is great, but she was a bland character. But the only reason why I have her under the plot category is because in season 5, like, they introduce this big room with her where she knows this plane is going to crash this day. And it's just like, how? They're just saying rubbish without any explanation, and I don't buy into it. Just whatever numbers they were, like, 6, 7, 12, 22, 23, 46, or something like that. It's like these numbers are bad luck, they bring bad luck, and I just thought this plot line and every time it was brought up was stupid. But the entire tempo plot line in the beginning of season 6 just came out of nowhere. It doesn't belong in this show, and it's just, you don't buy it for a single second. Uh, the whole bringing people back to life thing didn't work. Um, I already mentioned Jacob and Man in Black, so I won't mention them again. So, yeah, like, that's all the plot lines I could come up with. Like, there's not a lot of plot going on in this show, and lots of it is reliant on the mystery box idea, which is you set up all these questions without having the answers planned out, and the answers are inevitably going to be unsatisfying. And that's the case here. Oh, what's with all these hatches? Eh, they're just hatches on the island. People used to walk there. Oh, what's with this van on the island? Oh, people used to ride a van on the island. Oh, okay. Um, what's with the pregnant people and them dying? Pfft, beats me. Plan these things out ahead of time. But let's talk about the island itself because the setting of the island is completely wasted potential. There is no survival aspect to the show. We never see people struggle with dehydration or struggle to find food. It all seems incredibly easy. It actually makes the island look like a nice vacation to the point where I'm just like, you know what? Next time I travel, I'd be happy if my plane crashed on an island like this. When they eventually go back in season 5, it's not a big deal because it's never made to look like life or death. We never see people struggle with the weather, whether it's too much rain or if it's too hot. It just comes across as a minor inconvenience at best. And the island should be easy to follow so you know where each spot is. But the geography on the island is just so unclear. Things are better when you have a sense of where everything is. If you look at a movie like Don't Breeze, they give you a tour of the house when they break into it. So later in the movie, you have a sense where everything and everyone is. And it just makes that movie all the more effective. And then we've got the whole element of the island makes them travel through time, which is ridiculously stupid. But then why does the island disappear at the end of season 4? The island still exists during present day. They say it moved, but how? Well, too, this is never answered. Like, what was the point of all that? It never gets brought up again. We know they're on the island, they travel through time on the island, but the island, as far as we know, stays exactly where it is. The island is also comedically oversized. The number of hatches and underground tunnels and villages and buildings just becomes comedic at a certain point. It begins to feel less and less like an actual island. And then, of course, they discover a fucking temple and a fucking lighthouse. 
in this weird magical light thing. And it's just like, what is going on? You already pushed my suspension of disbelief as far as it can go. And then in season 6, they took it so much farther. There are so many episodes where they walk around the beach and they never see that freaking lighthouse before. They never saw this giant temple in this like civilization on the fucking island. Give me a goddamn break. I do not buy it for a single second. Like, in season one, they walked around without encountering anyone but Darnell and Ethan. We don't see a foot statue, a lighthouse, a temple, a village, any hatches. Really. Now, the others, it makes sense because they're on a different island. But just all this village, just, it, it's, it's too much. And then this island is apparently magical, which doesn't make a bit of sense. Like, how come Bork can suddenly walk? It's never explained. How come Michael can't kill himself because the island's not done with him yet? This whole magical element to it is just so contrived, it's made up on the spot and there's no rules. And another thing I hate about the show is the amount of contrivances. And knowing Jack's dad. All of season 6 flash sideways. Mr. Echo knowing the drug plane. Claire being Jack's half-sister. Locke's dad being responsible for Sawyer's parents' deaths. Holy and Libby in the same mental hospital, Charlie appearing in Desmond's flashbacks, Kate being friends with the muzzle of Sawyer's kid, the list goes on and on. This doesn't feel, this doesn't make the characters in this world feel bigger and more lived in. In fact, it makes this world feel all the more smaller. You know, like, look at Star Wars right now. Everything takes place during episodes 1 and 9 with the same characters on the same planets, and the universe has never felt smaller. When you try to connect everything, it's not like a, oh, that's interesting. It's just a, really? By connecting all these characters, you're making this world feel very small. Uh, in season 2, which is one of my favorite seasons, um... I don't like the surrealism element that was present in that season at all. I'm glad they dropped it. Like, Kate's stepfather possessing soil was stupid. Uh, the visions with Charlie and the polar bear and the horse. I just hated it all. And also, there's a few notes I made by the end of the show which started to get really tiring to me because these are overdone tropes within the show. They always mention tracking, how they can use it to find people. But they clearly don't have a single clue on how it actually works. It's just made up to be this non-stop contrivance so the characters can reunite. Oh, will you be able to track me? Yes, of course. And if we had the characters looking for footsteps or, you know, leaving traces or something, then I'd be more on board with it. But they don't. So it's just really contrived nonsense. Them getting captured time and time again at an eventual point, it lacks any bit of impact. The whole can we trust them angle. We got that in season 2 with the other survivors and Anna Lucia. Season 3 with Juliet. Season 4 with Charles Whitmore's crew. Season 5 with the farmer people and the other survivors on the plane. Season 6 with Jacob and Man in Black. Look, I like in movies when you're left whether or not you can trust someone. But you do it enough times, it becomes overdone, and it loses any bit of impact. Whenever they make it look like a main character died, I'm just like, did they? They overdid fake deaths, like in moments where Locke gets shot or Charlie gets hung. But, none of those are my biggest issues with this show. My biggest issue with this show is the fact that the show never lets characters talk. By season 6, I really did come to notice this, and it really did tick me off. Like, anytime there's drama between Jack and Kate, they don't talk. And when they do, they sit down, they talk for like 10 seconds, and then someone will be like, Hey Jack, can you help me move this tree? Just have the characters talk with each other. Just have them sort out their drama. That makes the characters more interesting. And they have the characters talk about other characters with someone else. Like, it would be nice to have a scene where Jack and Sawyer actually talk about Kate. But they can't. 
In season 6, Jack finds out he's related to Claire in the Flash Sideways. They get there for the Father's Will reading, and then as soon as he meets his sister, he's just like, eh, gotta go. Why? Just let scenes breathe. Just let people talk. You know, just let people try to sort things out. Because this show seems to avoid any bit of an internal conflict. And that is the most engaging type of conflict. I know it seems like I just tore this show apart, and I did to be fair. This show has lots of issues. It is far from great. But I still managed to just enjoy it enough. Naturally, while you spend six seasons with these characters, you do come to care for them by the end. I like Jack, Sawyer, and Kate as characters, and that was enough to keep me somewhat invested, even when they completely mishandled them. Now, the rest of the characters aren't great. The story isn't good. There's lots of story plot beats that aren't needed. The flashbacks are really bad. It's a heavily, heavily, heavily flawed show. But it does have some great moments. It does manage to be fast-paced, tense, and thrilling enough to keep me entertained at the most minimalistic level. This is not great television. It is, you watch it, you're entertained, and that's as good as you're going to get with this show. So I'm going to go ahead and give the entire TV show of Lost a 5 out of 10, slightly leaning towards a recommendation. Okay, and that is it. I spent a couple months watching this show. I spent a lot of time making videos for this show, and I'm just glad to be done. I, yes, I'm just glad to be done. It's not the last video being released, but it's the last video I'm filming, and now I can move on to the next show, finally. So yes, did you watch Lost? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.